Let's start from zero. What matters isn't how you start or what happens in the middle, it's how it all ends. When I first watched ReZero, I didn't expect such an inherent dark meaning behind the story. However, the deeper and more entwined I dove into the anime, the more I realized how much it really has darker intentions. Not so much with the main character, but the viewer as well. We all live our lives and portray ourselves in a unique way, doing the things that we enjoy and love on a day-to-day -day basis. Doing the stuff that we do represents us as a whole to the world we live in, so much that it affects the way that we react to certain situations and the way that people react to us in general. Everything to me about this anime is inspiring, to the writing, animation, the voice actors, even the music used. It can't be described as anything but emotional. It's impossible not to feel the resentment of the character inside the mind of the writer, or let alone in a different state of mind altogether. However, this story is something that defines loneliness, despair, and understanding. This is the story of Natsuki Subaru and his journey through trauma, torment, and hell. This story is about how someone, when pushed in a corner and doesn't know what to do, uses their inability to give up as a weapon. It's a story about not giving up. At least, that's what the writer Tepe Nagatsuki said on the originally released 2014 light novel of ReZero, Starting Life in Another World, later airing as a full-fledged anime on April 4th, 2016. In it, the main character Subaru is a regular shut-in who doesn't really do much, until suddenly, he's transported to another world where he's forced to spend his time in the city of Lagunica, a fantasy environment with adventure and action. Oh, and let me tell you, it's an amazing time. I'm obviously fucking joking. The protagonist is put into a strange role with a goal unknown, but the thing that makes him unique and different is that he can't die. And when he dies, he gets reset. And if the main character has no idea nor a goal to chase, what is he left to do? The real question is, if the main character can't die, what story could you even tell? However, everything about this entire story is really controlled by the actions that he chooses, and he slowly learns each interaction with other people for the first time, lets him learn more about them individually, and it also gives the viewer a stronger bond with the character's development. And with the story progressing and the relationship forms of the characters, it's much more interesting than focusing only on Subaru as a person. But for the story to progress, Subaru slowly needs to become a better person to save everyone he loves and cares for. The anime is a repeating cycle of suffering and trauma. From him watching traumatic events, crushing his mentality, or to him being tested on a physical level, it's not enough for a story where the protagonist cannot die. And to test the only weapon Subaru has, the enemy has to take his will to live. From Subaru remembering the existence of someone nobody else remembers that was close to him, to the time when he watched his loved ones fade away right in front of his eyes. The key that makes the story so significantly full of loneliness is the knowledge that Subaru can't even tell anyone about his power to return from death. And the more you watch it, it's really effective on the viewer to see how he uses it. If he could tell the others what's about to happen in the show, it would just not be the same. And as he goes through each and every death restarting each time, trying to just save one of his friends, everyone all together, it consistently shows how it breaks his character. And although he can return by death, it doesn't change the suffering of what he just witnessed previously. Even when the others don't know what happened, he repeatedly sees himself fail to save those he cares about. Even though he resets, it's still ingrained in his mind what he just saw. So obviously it's going to affect his character. Each scenario, he lives a life, he gains more experience with each situation. Either learning something new about someone or a problem he was stuck in previously. Falling in love or suffering an agonizing death. But the second he returns, they're nothing but a memory in only his mind. The only option that could really help his pain would be telling someone the help he's been put through. But he can't even tell anybody what happened. All of his loved ones notice he's in pain, but they don't understand why he is. Subaru is stuck in a never-ending cycle of trauma and pain, as he watches every single direction he takes lead into a failed direction. Because he wasn't the person he needed to be to save those that he loves. The longer that it goes on, the more weight of that thought increases and carries with him through every single cycle of trying to save his friends. And that's what makes this series such a depressing story. The more I looked into this anime, the more I noticed the hardest part of his loneliness is the feeling or knowledge that no one can really understand his issues. I feel the most telling thing in this anime is the fake optimism that Subaru always puts on in front of others, until he's so broken that he's physically and mentally unable to keep going. It's also because of this that, to me, Subaru is one of the most human characters I've seen in the media in a long time. And is also probably why I personally like this anime so much in the first place. I don't really have much to look at, and connected to it in a way that it made me want to do something different for once instead of being so much of a shut-in. This isn't really a major or long video, I just wanted to find meaning inside of the anime and express my thoughts somewhere about it. This is my own interpretation, I hope you all enjoyed, and if this video does decent at all, maybe someday I'll do another one.